power in music, right? And what I, when I listened to that, when I was thinking through different songs that have impacted us over time, I thought powerful emotions well up in our hearts and in our minds. In fact, how many of y'all saw the, the movie Space Jam? Come on, it dates you a little bit. It dates you a little bit. But when I would hear that song, I would say, I think I can dunk the basketball. But, but, but it didn't happen, right? But the powerful thing is when we team the Spirit of God with the music that he has created to live in our hearts as that theme, it is a powerful thing. Music matters greatly. Music is a power that God has given us. Music truly is the language of our soul. This morning, as we move into this message to celebrate the new year that we're getting ready to enter, the title of this message is Heart Song. And the question again is, what is the soundtrack of your life? As that theme of Jaws happened, the, the, kept, the thing that kept coming back in my mind, don't mess with mama today. Don't mess with daddy today. Boom, 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 boom. Have you ever felt like that? You know, we're not going to bite anybody, but we will bite their heads off with our words, right? The theme, what do people sense when we enter the room? Which song best describes the attitude of our hearts? Which song describes the attitude of our hearts the best? Because granted, the soundtrack changes, but there is a theme that can prevail, and we need to guard the song of our heart. Uh, Psalm 98 verse 1 tells us this. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done, and let's say this together, marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Can we thank him for the salvation that his strength has brought us, and may we enter this new year guarded about the song that lives in our hearts. Lord Jesus, we invite your presence into this gathering, and we pray that you would open your word to our understanding so that we perceive it as you have intended and that we can apply it and walk in it and live under the blessing that it is. Fill our hearts with the song of your intention. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What song have you selected for the new year? Somebody said, the one that I had last year is working fine for me. I think I'm just going to keep it. Well, maybe not. Music, again, is the language of the soul. And the song that lives in us is our personal selection. What song lives in us, what attitude prevails when we enter places, we have selected that. You say, Pastor, you don't know what people have done to me. Of course, there are people that hurt us and war to manipulate what lives in us. But the song that reigns, the song that is there is a choice that we've allowed to live. It is a song that we've allowed to live in us. Ephesians 5.19 tells us this about singing, about music. And this starts with this powerful command of the Lord. Instead of being drunk on wine, which many people are going to be drunk tonight, right? Many people are going to be celebrating the new year, inviting the wrong spirit in. And they will be singing a song, grant you. They will be singing a song. But the word of God tells us instead of being drunk on wine, instead be filled with the spirit. And then it moves on speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from who? From the spirit. The, the powerful dwelling of his spirit within us fills us with music. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. That song that we will allow to prevail, that song that we allow to live in us, that song in our heart is being broadcast. And guess who hears it? God hears it. 
God is listening to the song that we offer to him. He hears what we allow to dwell in us. But it's not only God that hears it. Others hear it. What tone do we bring to our homes? What tone are we bringing in our workplaces? What is the song that others hear from us? And then this is so important. That song that's being broadcast, the one who is attuned to it mostly, is you. You're hearing it. It's coming to you every day. When you lay your head down at night, it's singing to you. It's communicating its message to you. As you rise up in the morning, you may be sleepy, but that song's going to show up. So the selected song to speak to my soul is a choice that I've made. We will never be separated from our souls. Isn't that a a, a very heavy thought? Your soul is a gift from God that you will never be apart from. So how you invest in that soul will stick with you for all eternity. So it does matter the song that is in us. In fact, there are people right now in the pit of hell living with the song of their selection. They're living there and they know that they will never get out. They have made their choice. The song is selected. It is burnt in them. And and it's not going to change. But there's others that are up in, in the presence of the Lord with Jesus and they're singing the song that they learned clearly while they were on the earth. And they're rejoicing with Him Because the song that they invested in their soul was the right one. The one of God's intention. Our soul is eternal. The song of our heart communicates the condition of our soul to God, to others, and to ourselves. Is it time to change the playlist? And and to bring it a little bit more to uh, to the digital age that we live in now. You are the one that downloads the song. Used to be you had to go to what? The record store. But now you just go and you click a button and from this magical place called the cloud, it what? Shows up. Ephesians 4, chapter 4, starting with verse 22. Is it time to change the playlist? Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 22. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful, and let's say that word together, desires. Next verse. To be made new in the attitude of your mind. And to put on the new self. And and, and it's not just like this random generic thing. But God gives details of what this new self is. So that we know that it is what? New. Created to be like God. In true righteousness. And holiness. Created to be like God in true righteousness. In holiness. Listen closely to the song of your soul. Is it golden oldies? Is it just those songs that you're familiar with that you've learned so well that you can't give them up? It's kind of like this. It's so used, I'm so used to it, I will never let it go. I like the old song. Do you think in our old nature we can get used to the song that's being played and just accept it as our reality and never put on the what? The new. Of course. You were taught with regard to your former way of life. All of us have that former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its, and and think about that word heavily, It's deceitful desires. Desires set the tone for our lives. Desires motivate our direction. 
What desire we let stay in us is going to make a big difference of who we are and who we will become. Desires make their home deep within our heart. We will die for our desires. Desires influence who we become. It matters about those desires and their dwelling in us. Desires can be destructive and deceitful. A desire can come and say, I'm your best friend. You, you can die for me and it'll be all right. You can sell out for me and it can be all right. But all along, those desires are filled with manipulation and perspective that is not from the heart of God for us. Yet we will sit seated in our desires and protect them and let their song live on in us. When all along we're being lied to. And we're allowing those desires to continue to have their place in us. Desires, again, can be destructive and deceitful. The song of your heart flows from the desires you allow to live within. What inspires the song of your heart? Truly. As the recording artist goes into the studio, sometimes they, they write songs and they bring their own songs in and they're like, this is going to be a hit. We're going to record this. It's going to be great. Until someone called the producer shows up and says, no, no, doesn't sound quite right. And so at that point, that artist has a decision to make. Either I'm going to go with what feels right to me, or I'm going to trust the producer. And the producer comes, and in many cases, songs that we've heard and that are now famous would have never been famous if there wasn't a good producer. We have the ultimate producer for the song that lives in us and his name is Jesus. And he has chosen to live in us by the power of, of his Holy Spirit. Are we listening to him? Are we listening to him? What inspires the song of my heart? The old or the new? Again, Ephesians 22 through 24. Let's look at the, this again. Just look closely. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Alarm. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. And then verse 24. And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. We must make room for the new song. We like the old. We're familiar with the old. We know it. We're comfortable with it. But the old cannot be dressed up. It can't be manipulated it to be just religious, the old must be erased. It must be done away with. And this brought back a memory to me. How many of y'all, and let's, we're going to go way back. How many here in this room right now owned an eight-track player? Don't be shy. Raise it. Raise it and keep it up. Can you keep it up? Maybe it's a little tough to do that. The eight-track tape player, it, it I, I'm sorry, if you liked the song, it would take you forever to hear it again. You had to listen to songs to get to your favorite song. D does it make sense to this generation? And, and sometimes the 8-track would sometimes cut the song off in the middle and switch. I'm like, come on. And then anybody go way back to the reel to reel? Let's be real. Uh, reel to reel, okay? I still remember the day my dad brought a reel to reel tape recorder in the house and I still remember the eight track it's a little scary a little scary you be in, in the click click I'm like that wasn't even on beat but there was this unique thing called the cassette tape player still around but if you had a cassette tape and you wanted to erase the song
monks, to do it completely, you needed something called a demagnetizer. Anybody remember those? Especially with the reel-to-reel. You take this round, uh, uh, this round magnet that had some kind of power to it, And you would put it real close to the tape and move it back and forth. And sometimes it would hum. And guess what happened to the song? It was gone. It erased it. But now when we look at our new generation, it's not about demagnetizing. You just what? Delete it. Just delete it. But when you first what? Click on it. What happens, Norma? Are you sure you want to delete this? been there well I already made up my mind I clicked it once but it comes back are you sure you want to delete this and then that bold and intimidating thing you take that mouse that cursor and you what click it's what it's gone it's gone when we in our lives meet the old and the old is looking at us directly and the Holy Spirit has identified that old nature, that old song that's living in us. There are many times when we are led in repentance. Are you sure you want to give this up? Are you sure you want this gone? You've been there? And by God's mercy and God's grace, we can click it. Is he right? We can say yes, and it is removed. It is gone. The old does not hold power over the new. The option is always there to delete the old song. The old song must be overcome by the new, and the new is a gift from God. We look back at verse 24 again. It tells us this, and to put on. To put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, when I heard that word put on, it brought back some memories. And I'm going to ask another question. How many people had a record player growing up? Raise your hand. How How many right now have a record player in the house? You better raise your hand. He even went to a record shop this week. Vinyl's making a comeback. But do you remember, we're going old school. George, I know you remember. Ty. Ty, do you have a record? Did you have a record player? Yeah, he did. We used to say, can you put that song on? And the vision of it was like this. Take that needle and just hope that you hope that you're going to find that, that right place To what? To put the song on. And and a lot of times it kind of went like, yeah, before you got to it. And then you just hope you didn't ruin your brother's record. But it was an actual tedious step to get to your favorite song, to put on that song. In our lives, to put on that new nature, it takes great intention and it calls for a strength of purpose. It is not in our ability. God gives us that ability to put on the new self, but it is a choice. It is a willful step that we must be willing to do. Everyone has a song in their heart. And if we're bold enough, Maybe we can ask somebody, hey, hey, what's playing? What's been the message of my heart in 2017? What's been my theme song in 2017? I I heard that Rocky song. Again, I'm aging myself. But that is a powerful song of what? Motivation. And and as you hear it, it's probably a really good song to, to work out with. You might get hurt. But, but it's a good song. But in, in our lives, we have some song that we've accepted, that we've allowed to live in our hearts. And again, God's intention that it would be the new song. Our song, again, is broadcast every day. And the thing is, is it the new song or is it the old song? Now, I'm going to 
not embarrass anybody. That's not my intention. But Barb, over the years, has gotten really good to tell who's coming down the stairs at our house by the pitter-pat of our two, two boys. Now, when we moved in the house that we're in, uh, they weren't little guys, but Barb could tell who's coming down the stairs. Well, this week it got a little confusing. We had, we had uh, Jesse Lee coming down the stairs. And Barb was like, is that Ben? I know it's not awesome, but is it Ben or is it Jesse Lee? Have you figured it out yet? You haven't. Well, well to bring in, in, encouragement to you, Jesse Lee, Jesse Lee uh, has brought a lot of laughter in the house, a lot of joy in the house. And, and, and what a blessing. What a blessing to bring upbeat to our environment, not fake, not phony. And I know it wasn't easy coming to a family's home that you, all you knew about them was Ben. You didn't know a whole lot about us, but you were bold enough to do that. And in your presence in our house, it's been a very positive, very positive thing. Laughter. I had to even ask Ben, I said, Ben, what was she laughing about? <laughs> It was, it, again, what do we bring in to the room? What is the song that we're broadcasting to others? God's love and grace allows us the choice of having the new song. One of the things that scares me about getting older is I don't want to cut into my playlist, Grumpy Old Man. You ever heard that playlist? Grumpy Old Man. I hurt, ain't nothing right, get out of my way, you, 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 you're, young, you're young, you don't know a thing. I don't want to be there, I don't want to be there, but I'm tempted, right? The song matters because it impacts others. And again, regardless of where our age is, the new song is as new as it was when we were five years old in loving Jesus. It's genuine, it is timeless. God's love and grace allows us the choice of having a new song. Verse 24 again. And to put on a new, excuse me, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. The new song is tuned to the heart of God. Can we say thank you, Lord? The new song is, a tu it, it is tuned by God. Just like when these instruments are being tuned, it matters what they're listening to for that adjustment. They've, got it, they've gotten very um, high-tech now where you, where you have a meter that tells you precision. But the ear reminds you, yes, you're there. You're there. You are in tune. In our walk with God, the new song is tuned to the heart of God. We can call it anything else. We can put excuses on it. But God says, the new song that lives in you should be in tune with me, not the old. And then we look further. And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And let's look at this statement again. Like who? Y'all still awake with me? New song, the new nature, like God, in attitude. You ever had your, your, your attitude affected by the music that you're listening to? Have you? Music, music will mess with your mind if it's the wrong music. And as you're listening to music, sometimes the countenance changes. I don't know about you, I've been driving around sometimes, I see people walking down the street with the headphones on, and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? But then I remember sometimes when I'm alone in the car, and I'm singing, I used to have a friend tell me, Ned, what? I said, what? In high school, why every time I pass you, are you singing in your car? And, and I did, I was alone, I was just singing, having fun, before, and and the attitude comes out. Like God in thoughts. The song impacts our thoughts. What we let live in us, that song, 
affects the way that we think. There is a strategy to change the song in our heart. Like God in steps because the song moves us, doesn't it? You believe that? All you got to do is look at the choir on Sunday morning. Music motivates and it what? Moves you. And just because maybe you don't move as much, don't, don't fall somebody that that's fills the song, right? It's a good thing. Like God in expression, the song sets the tone of our life. That's why it is very important that we not only guard what dwells within us, the song that dwells within us, but what kind of music we allow to enter the gateway of our mind and our heart like God in the message of our life the song communicates our heart to others you want to know the deepness of a soul if they're genuine songwriters listen to their music listen closely because the song normally doesn't lie Those that are very artistic will dig very deep for the motivation of their songs. And the song is is coming right out of the dwelling of the heart. God has chosen that new song to be a song of righteousness. And the song of righteousness is stated in this way. It's a passion to walk and step with God. God, the new song that lives in me, it's like I want to be Where you want me to be. When I enter into the room, I don't want to bring that old. I want to bring righteousness. Not haughtiness. Not a spirit of religion. But a passion to walk in step with you, God. To be about what you want to happen in the environment that you've called me to. And then also back at verse 24. To put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness, and let's say this together, and holiness. A song of holiness. A joy to be set apart for the purposes of God. That's what holiness is. You know, when we were singing about Jesus today being holy, I'm like, thank you, Lord, that you are set apart. Not removed from us, but you are genuinely God. And so in us, you have given us the opportunity to walk in your holiness, to have a joy about being about the purpose of God, set apart for his purpose. You go into school right now, you go into your workplaces, and what do you hear? You hear the contemporary music of choice. Sometimes I don't like, I mean, I don't like going shopping. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't mind the grocery store, but I don't like spending time at the mall, I just don't. But all you got to be there a little bit of a little time, you're hearing all these songs. And, and, and all these songs. And it's like, okay, I don't, I don't want to hear that anymore. Now and then, now and then a, a nugget will, will come through. But the, the spirit is being set. The tone is being set. May that song of holiness remind us of the honor that we have to be set apart for the plans and the purposes of God. That is why we are here upon this earth again. And to put off, excuse me, to put on the new self created to be, let's say those three words together. Be like God. That's the standard of the song. It's, again, it's, it's, it's not something that God has put before us and says it's impossible. He says, that's the goal. That is the tune that you go for. That is what you tune to in true righteousness and holiness. True righteousness and holiness are displayed in the heart that gladly sings a new song of praise and honor to God. The song of our heart is not silent. The song of our heart is not hidden. We may think it is. We may think we just have our earphones on, our earbuds in, and nobody else is hearing it. They are hearing it. The song of our heart 
is offered up to God each day. And God desires and deserves what? A new song. One that is birthed by His Holy Spirit living in us. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. Here's the thing. God is not selfish. When we work for His purposes... We benefit for our highest purpose. Just always remember that. God's not up to to just plug us into an army and say, do what I say. Don't ask questions. That's not what he's about. He's about our highest good. So when we are about singing that new song that he gives us, when we are about his purpose, we live at the highest level that life has to offer. The song of your heart, again, is being broadcast. You can hide away. You, cannot, you can just say, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep quiet. Your song's still singing. God hears it. Others hear it. And not least, you hear it. And it sets the direction for the life that you live upon this earth. As we enter this new year, May our hearts be filled with the new song God's grace has provided. I want to tell you a story about a songwriter. You know him. His name is David. David had an amazing ability to write music that brought comfort to others. But it wasn't David's ability. It was a gift that God gave David. And David knew how to communicate from his heart to the Lord. And when Saul was under distress, he called for who? David to come and to sing these songs. And they brought comfort to a a, a king that was in rebellion. But Saul was a man living during a time where the fullness of God's grace had not yet been experienced. But also, he was still from fallen man. And David messed up terribly. He sinned against God through the act of adultery. But not only that, he sinned against God through the act of murder. Same man, same Heart that wanted God, but he had chose to play the old song. He chose to be inspired by that fallen nature rather than the Holy Spirit that would visit him and express comfort not only to himself, but comfort to God and comfort to others. And as David stood rebuked by the prophet, exposed for the adulterer that he was, And the murderer that he was. He went to be alone with God. And this song. This new song. Flowed from his heart. Psalm 51, 10, 12. Create in me a clean heart. O God. And renew a right spirit within me. That's a new song. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. In David's response, how did God respond? Grace and mercy and provision for the new song. In fact, the song itself is the Word of God. And I believe this, the Word of God is sealed not to be added to. But the words of God are still being visited to us each and every day. Always tested by the Word. But God knows our struggles. He knows what it feels like for 
our old song to re-inhabit on us. But he is delighted when we are willing to sing a new song before him. And he is the author of that song, the provider of that song, and the sustainer of that song. Can we just stand to our feet for a moment and just bow for, in prayer? And I want to just sing this a cappella. If you know it, feel free to sing along. But it's an old chorus that I remember that came out of, of this verse. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Restore unto me. Of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew and renew a right spirit within me. One more time. And renew a right spirit within me.